హలో ఎవ్రీబడి ఐఎమ్ ఈ కృష్ణారావు పాత్రం టుడే ఐ విల్ డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ సమ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ విచ్ ఇస్ హెవింగ్ సమ్ ఎక్సెప్షన్స్ వెన్ ఎవర్ ఎక్సెప్షన్ కమ్స్ హౌ టు హ్యాండిల్ ఇట్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద డిఫరెంట్ కీ వర్డ్స్ అదే అండ్ హౌ కెన్ రైట్ ద డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ లెట్ ఆర్ సి సెట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ విత్ ఎక్సెప్షన్ హ్యాండిల్ మెకానిక్ దెర్ ఆర్ డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ మెకానిజం అదే సో ఇన్ యూర్ కోడ్ యూ కెన్ యూస్ ఏ ద ట్రై అండ్ క్యాచ్ for solving some problems or you can use try with multiple cats or you can use nested try or you can use try with finally or you can use try catch finally at the same time you can throw your own keywords means your own exceptions or you can throw the exception through methods if you want to write your own method that you will throw exception as well as you can write your own custom exception also so let us see one by one through set of programs so i'll go to my environment i'll go to id my notepad there i'll type a program where i can use these varieties of programs so now we'll focus on the java programs so i'm opening my notepad so first we'll try with to try and catch how to use try catch try catch prob okay and i told you in the previous session try is the keyword which allows you to write the statements that statement may generate some runtime error so try block basically useful to write the set of statements that statement may generate the exception that means runtime error and whenever the runtime error comes there must be a catch block to handle it to catch it so the program should not terminate immediately because of the exception so i should continue from that point onwards so let us write a program class exception 1 open bracket close bracket there i'll write public static void main string arguments array okay here i want to do a program where it may generate some runtime errors for example because those runtime errors may be arithmetic related or may be array related or it may be a null pointer exception or may be a file not found exception or it may be a network connection there are different types of errors may come so those errors you should handle with the help of this try and catch block so let us write the try block first try open bracket close bracket always you should write try and then write catch catch exception see this is the general syntax then here you should write your codes the code statement should be written in the inside block and whenever the error comes then you should write your statements your error messages okay so this is the general way of writing the try and catch now let me write a program where i will read set of numbers into an array and then do the addition what is the question read set of numbers and store in an array and find some this is the goal okay read set of numbers and store in an array and find the sum so to solve this problem what i have to do i have to declare an array and after declaring array i have to store the data and then fetch it now let me declare an array so how to declare array int arr this is the array declaration then i have to initialize the array 
are equal to for initializing array what first of all you have to allocate memory with the help of new operator new followed by what kind of array that is integer type then in the square bracket you should mention how much assume i want to show five integers so memory is allocated now how many elements i can store in this array i can store five elements let me print the length of the array system dot out dot printer and the array size the array size equal to how to print array size and i told you for array there is a special attribute called length so i can write here name of the array is arr dot length length is one attribute or the property of the array let me print first then i'll go into that program so my program name is exception one control c control s control v dot java so i let me store java source code my program save now go to the program after going here then compile it java c exception 1 dot java yes program compiled now run java exe pt i1 exception 1 yeah the capacity of array is 5 that means i can store five integers so this way you can find out how many elements you can store so whatever the number you given that much memory will be allocated so five integer memory one integer is 4 byte so 5 into 4 20 bytes of memory is allocated fine now my goal is what read five integers and store in the array store in the so how to read the data let me declare the scanner class because using scanner i have to read it and the scanner class belongs to util package so if you want to use the scanner class you have to import the scanner class so import java dot util dot star okay now here i will initialize scanner sc equal to new scanner within bracket system dot in and remember if at all any mistakes are there with syntax those syntactical mistakes it can be detected by the compiler so those things will not comes under exception because the exception handling comes during run time so whatever the syntax mistakes are there those things it can be easily detected by the compiler because if you are not following proper syntax then now i want to read how many digits a number of digits so for because multiple time i have read whenever you want to read more than one time always use a loop for int i equal 0 until i less than let me write equal to array dot length l e n g t h i plus plus so here if i write this way what happens this loop repeats from 0 to until the length of the array what is the length of the array we have length is 5 but here i given up to 5 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 that means it will repeat how many time 0 1 2 3 4 5 that means six time this is repeating but it should not come six time so how to do so whenever this situation comes you may get a run time error let us see how this error comes now because my goal is to display that error name of the array is error my index is i this equal to sc dot next int so i got the error and means sorry i read the data and stored in the array i's position now after repeating five time because my goal is what to find the sum 
read the set of numbers store in array and find the sum so here i am reading and here i am storing this is storing place this is reading place reading the data and storing the ith place but at the same time you will find the sum also so whatever the number you are entering those numbers i have to add it so for that i will declare a variable called sum int s initially the sum is 0 so my sum will be stored in s s equal to i can do plus equal to error of i so that means whatever data you are adding again i am adding to s so it is keep on adding once the loop is over then i have to print it my total because after reading all the numbers it is adding one by one once the loop is over then i want to print the sum system dot out dot print length sum is plus sum that s value i have to print it now let us run Yes, it is asking enter the five numbers 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. It is reading, but it is not printing the sum. That means it has gone out of the boundary. It has gone out of the boundary because after repeating six times, the loop has to terminate and it has to print, but it is not printing because the control has gone to. OS. So it is not showing my output. Actually, I was expecting my sum should be display, but sum is not display because here after reaching fifth place, it is throwing exception. It comes here, but you are not printing. Let me print here. So how to print? I think I told in the previous session to print the error. You can print three ways. Let me print a simple way: system dot out dot print and e that means the error object you are printing error object you are printing control s now let me run again compile it run it 1 2 3 4 5 now when i enter 6 time yeah it is saying an error now because i am printing that one that's why it is going out of boundary array index out of bounds exception Earlier it was not printing because I did not print the E. Now it is showing fine. But I want to come out and print the sum. Print the sum. So what I will do? This sum statement I will write here. That means up to that. That means up to fifth place what was the sum i want to print it so what i will do i came here but what is that s where you have declared s s is declared here in a try block so when you declare in a try block can you get in catch block so what my compiler says you see that question you should get in your mind compile yes that means this is a compiler means syntax error you cannot C, it is not visible because that is declared in the try block. But we are printing in catch block. So in catch block, SC is not visible. So that's why the system is giving. So to visible everywhere, what I will do? The declaration part, instead of declaring in the try block, I will cut it and put above the try. That means if I write here, this S is global to try block and catch block. So now I can display here or I can display here. Are you ready? Now let me print. Compile it. Yes. Now my array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When I am entering 6, it is throwing exception. So if I enter 6, Throwing exception, it is coming out of this try block and came to 
sketch means sketch block it is sketching the exception up to that time what is the sum it is winning so i got sum how much 15 the 6 is rejected because when i reached to 6 it was throwing exception it did not add it did not store because my capacity of the array is 5 only but you are trying to store 6th element 6th element cannot be stored yet yeah, there is no place okay so automatically my cursor has come to this place means control has come to this place and the sum has printed sum has printed so this is a simple example of try and catch now i will show you how to use nested try no less so this is a, a simple example try to observe okay so you can go through this code and you can understand how the control has now you may ask a question here if i write exception this is called generalized exception this is called generalized exception what do you mean by generalized exception remember that again there are two types of exception one is generalized second one is specialized generalized exception it can catch any type of error it can catch any type of exceptions but specialized exception it can handle only a specific type of exception only those are called specialized exception so i will show you in another program control c control s control n exceptions are two types exc pp exceptions are two types one is generalized exception second is specialized one is generalized second one is specialized generalized exception is means it is a generic form so this exception class comes under generalized exception it can handle any kind of exception because this is the parent of all exception it is a parent of all exception where gen specialized means you are uh, arithmetic exception arithmetic exception or null pointer exception or array index out of bound exception so these are all specific to particular type that means it can handle a particular type of error only now in the previous program we have used generalized exception now let me use the specialized exception one example now see yes i have kept comment control v same program i am changing here what i did i have allocated memory i have allocated memory now without allocating memory i will try to store i will put comma i will remove this the previous program now see control s i will put the name as exception 2 exception 2 control c control s control v and store as java file yes now go to the command prompt control c java c exception 2 dot java now see it has thrown the error during the compilation time itself so the compiler is not accepting without allocating memory you cannot use array dot length so this is compile time mistake so that means you have to allocated memory without allocated memory you cannot find the length it is showing error here it is showing error here syntactical error now i should allocate memory 
ar is equal to nu int of within square bracket how much assume i want to five elements so five fine now as i throwing exception after the length here i will make it generalize six means specialized exception here what i should write because this is going out of boundary so this is array index out of bound exception so this is the name actually array index out of bounds exception this name you should write this is your specialized exception this is your specialized exception earlier i wrote only exception because the exception is a generalized one that is a parent class of all so you can write this way now let me show the specialized control c and specialized exception is always better than general yeah now let me run always it is faster exception 2 yeah now it is asking enter the five numbers as in 1 2 3 4 5 after 5 it is throwing it should throw exception 6 yeah now i got my answer so it is also faster so better write this one this is always suggestible to write now if at all you want to write one more for example number format exception i'll write one more catch this is try with multiple catch number format exception number format exception i want to implement this that means two exception i want to handle so this will come under your try with multiple cats try with multiple cats try with multiple cats now this catch it will handle what array related errors this catch will handle your number format related so here i will print a message assume i will store up to this i am storing that means repeating how many time five time this loop repeats five times and prints the sum. Let me introduce one more variable. Assume int x comma y are two variables. X equal to integer dot pass int of assume I'll write here. 1 to a 1 to a i am trying to convert this number into integer and i want to store in y also y equal to assume here i am writing sum 13 now i want to find the sum control c the new sum x plus y sum x plus y so i want to print the value of x plus y x plus y now this is not a valid number actually it is an invalid number so you cannot translate from string to integer so that means it is a wrong format so whenever you are trying to translate from string to integer that time it is no exception. What exception? It is nothing but number format exception. Number format exception. So whenever this error comes, this error comes. So what I will do? Instead of coming to this catch, the control comes to this catch. So here I will print a message. 
just a message number format exception number format exception e and that print that message i want to print it control c control v so let me print that error control s my exception program ready let me compile exception first you have to compile it yes now run. yeah now five elements i will enter one two three four five it is showing directly there itself some because there is no exception whereas i got this error what error number format exception this message came from which place it came from second catch block that means here it came here because it is not able to translate from string to integer it is throwing exception so here you are getting number format exception so the number format exception you will get while translating from string to integer so that time this statement is executed. so that means what in a single try you can have multiple types of errors so those errors you can control through different types of cats so this is the way you can write try with multiple cats now we we'll write another program so this is a try with multiple cats now let us have one more program control s control n we'll see try with finally try with finally how you can use try and final generally try block is allowing you to write set of statement that statement may generate error or may not generate error even though there is no error but finally block will work whether there is error or there is no error final block will work at any cost so that is the nature of final block so let me write a simple program try with finally so class exe pt on exception 3 this is the name you can give anything the name need not be exception because as i am doing in a sequence i am putting 3 then here i will write public static void main string arguments array ok here i will write a simple try block try and i told you for every try you can write catch or you can write finally or you can write catch and finally also so let me write in this program only finally that means you can write the code in this way also so here i will print a message system dot out dot println hello try hello try just a message at the same time, I will write in the final block also. Hello, finally. That means what? You are going to check how the control is moving. Whether it goes to only try or it goes to only finally or it goes to both. So, let me check. So, as you know that control always goes to first try and then at the last it will go to finally. At the last it will go to finally. So, whether there is error or there is no error, it will not check. Exception 3. Okay. So, I am going to find it. Okay. Let me run. Place the screen. Java C. Exception 3. Dot Java. What is saying? It cannot find the symbol. So there is a P R I and spelling mistake. Print ln. Here also. P R I and T ln. Print ln. Let me compile. Exception 3. Yes. Now there is no mistakes syntactically. Now Java. Followed by. Exe PT on exception 3. 
dot plus. So I will remove the dot plus. Yeah, I got hello try as well as hello finally also. That means the control goes to both the place. Control goes to both the place. So that is the way try and finally works. This is a simple example of try and finally. Let me write a simple program. Int x comma y comma z x equal to assume 10 and y equal to 0 and z equal to x by y so when i write this statement automatically it shows there is error because something by 0 is not possible so you will get a specific error what is that error arithmetic error so arithmetic exception so whenever this exception comes immediately it will throw as there is no catch, it's supposed to go to OS directly. But here, instead of going to OS directly, it will go to the final and then go to OS. So now, here, you will get the finally, then it will stop. Let me check. Control S. Compile it. Yeah, it is first is printing hello, try, and finally, and then it has gone to this place. So, it will not go to the OS directly. It is printing finally and then goes. Okay. So, this is the way the control moves. First, it prints hello try. Then, it is trying to solve this problem. Z equal x by y. As x is 10 and y is 0. 10 by 0 is not possible. Then, it is supposed to throw the exception directly. But, instead of going to exception to the OS, it checks whether there is a final block or not. So, it will execute first finally, then send the control. Okay. Now, control A, control C, control N, control V. I am writing try, catch and final now. One more program. Try, catch, final. Try, catch and final. Let me, okay, for you clarity purpose, I am writing. Now, in this program, what you will see? How to write try, catch, and finally. So how to write? So, the order is first you have to try, open bracket, close bracket, and then catch exception E, and then finally. This is the order. You cannot write like this. Okay. Try finally catch is wrong. But try catch finally is correct. This is the order you have to follow. And if I write only exception, that says what? It is a generalized exception. It is a generalized exception. That means it can handle any type of error. It can handle any type of error. Now, let me print a simple message. System dot out dot println hello try again here I write hello catch and here I write hello finally hello finally so I am having three statement in try block one statement, catch one statement, final one statement. So which one will execute? As the control comes to try block, it will execute first. First it will execute. This is the first statement. Okay. As there is no error in this statement, syntactically correct, as there is no error. So this catch block will not activate. That means the control will not come to here. This block will activate only when there is a error. Runtime error in the try block. But as there is no error, this block will not execute. But the control comes here. So that means the control comes to this block. Which block? Final block. So this comes to here. So now if I execute this program, what output I'll get? I'll get hello try as well as hello finally. Let me check now. Control C, Control S, Control V.
exception 3 is there already, so I will make it post. Control S. Exception 4 dot Java. My program compile. Now let me search so program shell. Now let me compile Java C. Exception 4 dot Java. Yeah. JVAC. J Yes, Java exception 4. Yeah, now there is no mistake. Now let me run Java followed by exception 4. Yeah, now you got hello try as well as hello finally, but you did not get hello catch because there is no error in the try block. Now let me introduce one error in the try block. I am introducing an error. Assume I will write here int x x equal to 20 by 0. x equal to 20 by 0. So that means what? 20 by 0 is not possible. So it throws exception. So whenever it is throwing exception, what happens? This catch block is ready. Now it will come here. Then it is a hello catch. So first it will come hello try. Then it will throw exception. Whenever it is throwing exception, this catch block will activate. It is print hello catch. And finally it comes hello finally. So that means you will get this all the three now. Because there is a mistake. Compile it. Yeah. Now you got all the three. Hello try. Hello catch. Hello finally. So now you got the idea how catch block is activated. So catch will activate only if there is an error in the try block. If there is no mistake, it will not activate. Now, I want to say that assume instead of exception, I will write here null pointer exception. Null pointer exception. That means what? I do not want to write this one. So this will activate if I write in the null pointer exception, this will activate only if the null pointer comes. Null pointer exception comes in the try block. Now, let us check. Now, this is called specialized exception. This is called specialized exception. Let me check. Compile it. Yes. Now, you got hello try. Hello finally. And then it has gone to OS. Because your try block is generating not null pointer exception, that try block is generating arithmetic exception. Please observe here, it is generating arithmetic exception. But that exception is not there in your program. That's why it is throwing to OS. It is not going to the catch block. Whereas, I may introduce one more exception. Control C. Hello, this is already arithmetic exception. Instead of null pointer exception, I will write here arithmetic exception. Arithmetic exception. So that means what? I have introduced both the exception, null pointer exception as well as arithmetic exception. This is hello try catch for null pointer exception for simplicity, and this is for arithmetic exception. Arith. So now I want to check where the control is going. Whether it is going to first catch or second catch. Control S. Go to the program. Java exception 4. Now. Exception. Yeah. Now it has gone to arithmetic exception. Not in the null point exception. So. In program. You can write. Try with multiple cats With finally also. So and while writing multiple cats you should write every individual exception. Now there is a question also, can I write try individual exceptions means specialized exception with generalized exception also. Let me introduce a generalized exception. Let me write same program. 
control C. I want to write generalized exception. Here I wrote. That means generalized exception means what? Only exception. It's called generalized. This is general. Now you see the, what is the mistake. So in this program, you have introduced both generalized as well as specialized. When you write this statement, what will happen? This generalized exception will handle anything. So that means this catch block will not get chance. This catch block will not get chance because this fellow can control any exception. Then why should I write this one? So what my compiler says, you see, if you do this type of mistakes, yeah, the compiler says, no, it is not possible. This is syntactical mistakes. Do not write first to generalize and then specialize. So, generalized exception cannot be at the beginning. If at all, your yeah, specialize is not capable, then generalize will do. If you write generalize, it can handle anything. Then specialize is not required at all. So, for that purpose, do not write generalize exception at the beginning. You cut it and write at the bottom. That means at the last catch. Now it is correct because if at all the first catch is not matching, then go to second catch. If second catch is not satisfying, go to third catch. This is the first catch. This is the second catch. If first two are not able to catch, then the generalize will catch anything. It is general. Control C. Exception. Yes. Yeah. Now there is no problem. But as I am having already arithmetic catch exception, it is going there and doing. For example, I am having no arithmetic exception. For example, I am having, I will write array index bound exception. Array index outer bound exception. Assume I want to write this exception. So that means my program is capable of null, capable of null counter exception as well as capable of array index bound exception. These two errors it can handle. But my program generates what? Arithmetic exception. This is generates arithmetic exception. Arithmetic exception. But this exception is not there in your program. This is capable of holding null counter exception and this is capable of holding are a related error, but this fellow is waiting. This fellow can handle anything. If first one is fail, second one fail, third one is a generalized exception, it can handle anything. So now there is no mistake. Control S. Now compile it. Yeah, now it has come to general. Observe here, general. Okay. So if specialized is not capable of handling, then it goes to generalize. So, generalize should be at the bottom. You cannot write in the middle. Sorry, you cannot write in the middle or you cannot write in the beginning. Always it should be at the bottom because if specialize fail, then generalize will activate. So, this is the way it works. So, now you have seen how to use try with the catch, try with finally, try with multiple catch with finally. Okay. So, this is a, a simple program with try, catch and panel. Now let me go for nested try. Nested try. Nested try means what? It is a program which is having a try block within a try. That is called nested try. Try within a try is known as nested try. Now, let us have a small program plus nested try, nested try here what I will do, I will write my main method public static void main string arguments array Here, I will write nested try. Try, open bracket, close bracket.
get exe pp ever generally generalized exception is better one because even if you do not know the exact name you write generalized exception so that that is capable of doing all types of error but there is a disadvantage what is the disadvantage generalized exception is slower than specialized one because specialized will do the work very fast so in terms of time generalized is slow but in terms of uh, processing fast specialized is better now here i will write one method system dot out dot printer then hello outer tray outer tray as i said you have to write try within a tray that is called nested tray let me write one more try in a tray try here that means i am writing one more try inside the tray control c control v hello inner tray inner tray yes for this try again you should write catch catch exception so for every try there must be a catch block this catch block i will write here system dot out dot printer then hello inner catch so you can catch at internally also because for every try there must be a catch block and i will write one more statement at the outer try so this block will activate if there is a mistake in the outer try that means anything happen here because if at all anything happen internal try this catch is catching if at all happening other than the try assume here if at all any error comes then the catch will activate now let me see how this works next try Let's say try. Let me run Java C. Let's say try. Yeah, now there is no mistake. Java. Let's say try. Yeah, now you got what one mistake, one message from outer try as well as inner try. as there is no mistake so this block is not activated as well as this also not activated these two will activate if there is a mistake or if there is a runtime error for example i'll write here int x x equal to 5 by 0 5 by 0 some mistake as it is having error runtime error so when this runtime error comes this inner try will catch inner try will catch automatically this will catch and this statement will not activate because there is no error in the outer try block let me check compile it yeah now your inner try is throwing exception and the inner catch is activated inner catch is activated now i may write one statement i want to activate both this is my general statement of outer try and i will write one more statement here int y this y is not part of the inner try this is part of outer try y here i write y equal to some 10 by 0 that means what it is throwing exception it is throwing exception whenever it throws exception it comes to this catch hello outer catch let me check 
compile it yeah now i got both first two hello try inner try the inner try in throwing exception it is catching now outer try in throwing exception it is catching so that means all the blocks are activated all the blocks are activated so you have to observe where exactly the errors are coming if there is no error this will not activate now let me have one final block also finally inner finally i'll write control c inner finally inner finally this is the final for inner tray and i will write i will write one more finally for outer tray hello outer finally control s compile it yeah now you got hello try hello inner try inner catch and inner finally so that means after finishing the inner try block then outer catch and outer finally so this is the way so that means for every try you can have a catch as well finally also try catch finally so after finishing that one then you will come to outer catch so until finishing this one is not coming to outer catch so try to remember finally we will activate at the end of the try sequence so now you have seen how to use nested try and how to use try with finally also in the nested try let me have one more program how to use throw so till now you have seen try with catch try with finally try with catch and finally and you have seen try with multiple catch as well as you have seen try within a try so there are the different varieties of programs so in the coming days you have to use this exception handling program in your future applications because if you use this exception handling then your program is more reliable more robust so let me use another program how to use throw keyword throw so throw keyword is a special keyword which will allow you to throw exceptionally means uh, explicitly generally system will throw that is implicit throw whereas explicit throw means you use a throw keyword so even though there is no mistake sometime based upon some logical condition you want to throw in that case you can write throw keyword so throw keyword allows you to throw the control away from the block throw the control throw the control from try block okay throw them so we we'll write a program called throw demo so let me write throw demo plus throw demo open bracket close bracket public static void main string argument array here because you have to write the throw based on some condition so let me write a condition i'll write a try block try catch exception e here let me read a number int x comma y comma z i am having three number here i'll read the value of x x equal to sc dot next int i am reading an integer and y equal to sc dot next int i am reading two integer so how we are reading two integer using 
scan. Define a scanner class, scanner SC equal to new scanner within bracket system dot in. So my scanner class object is ready. But if at all you are using scanner class, you have to import. What do you have to import? Import java dot util dot start. So under util package, scanner is there. Okay. Here I will put a condition. If x is greater than y or if y equal to 0, then I want to throw exception. I want to throw exception. I will put a condition. If y equal to equal to 0, then I will throw exception. Throw new which exception? Some exception that name I should write. So I let me use one arithmetic exception. No new arithmetic exception. I am throwing an object of arithmetic. So whenever you are throwing that time the catch block is ready to catch. So you can catch it here. I'll print a message as you are throwing. So I'll print a message system dot out dot println error. That error I will print it plus e. Okay. So my program is ready. Let me run. Java C through demo. Yes, as there is a scanner. Scanner means the S should be uppercase. So as I have written lowercase, showing error. So write S uppercase, control S. Compile it. Yeah, now syntactically correct. There is no mistake. Once syntactically correct, then you have to run it. Java followed by through demo. Now it is throwing, but control C, no such element exception. Here, what is the value of y? The value of y should be 0, then only it will throw, otherwise it will not throw. Now, it is Waiting to read the data. Assume first data is 10, second data is 5. Now there is no condition satisfying because the value of y is 5, which is not equal to 0. Now let me run. Value is 10, second is 0. When it is going 0, yeah. Now you got error. What error? Arithmetic exception error because I kept the condition. If at all the y equal 0, then only throw. Otherwise, don't throw at all. So that means explicitly I have thrown. Explicitly I have thrown. Whenever y is 0. So always print a message here. System dot out dot print ln enter a and b. Enter x and y. Then this message comes you to enter it. Otherwise the system doesn't know what to do. Compile it. And yeah, enter x and y, it is asking. Assume x is 10, y is 2. So there is no mistake, it is not throwing exception. But if I enter, assume x is 5, y is 0. Because you kept the condition what? Whenever y equal 0, you are throwing which exception? Arithmetic exception. So that exception object is caught by the catch block. So that is, means this is the way you have tried throw keyword. So throw to be used to throw a particular exception based upon some condition based upon some condition so this is a simple example of throw demo so you see so you have seen how to use try how to use catch how to use finally how to use throw and one more keyword is the throws how to use throws we will see throws demo control n t h or O W S throws. Generally, when I say throws, you should write along the method. That means the 
method is throwing some exception method throws that exception so in object to enter program you may write multiple methods that method will not handle the exception it will throw the exception then your driver method should handle it so let us write a small program to use throws so T H R O W S throws demo. Here I'll write. I'll write my method called void. The fun fun is a method, but it throws. Throws the exception. Here I wrote. My method is throwing exception. What exception? Some exception. Here. Let me write int x comma y. Okay. In sub one, I'll write div division method. Which method takes two parameters? Int x comma int y. That means my division is a method which is taking two parameters x and y and i want to return x y y so my method demands what divide x and y and return it what you have to return the value of x y y x is integer y also integer so the return type should be also integer okay so i wrote this this one i want to call in my main method because this is object in program i will go to my main method public static void main string argument array okay then what i will do i will create a, because i want to call this method which method the div method so if you want to call the div method what you have to do first First of all, you will create object. To call any method, first create object. Throw demo obj equal to new throw demo this one. Okay. I have created the object. And what is my goal? To call that method. Which method? Div method. And the div method, what is doing? It is reading two number. Sorry, taking two number and returns the division of two. For example. I will write one variable z and z equal to obj dot div of 12 comma 4 12 comma 4 then print the value of z system dot out dot print and the z will z equal to how much So whatever the value you are returning, that value you have to print on the screen. So let me run now. Throws demo. Now I have not still handle. Now let us check what happens. Let us save the program. Throws demo. The source file. Okay. Go to the command prompt. Java C hmm. throws demo dot Java. Okay. Now there is a mistake. What is the mistake? Cannot find the symbol Z because I wrote in upper case, but I have declared as a lower variable. It must be also lower case Z. As caps lock is on. Z here also should be lower case Z. Control S. Yeah. Now, unreported exception, it must be caught or declared to be thrown. As you know that your method is throwing, but you are not catching. That's why the system says you must catch it. You must catch it. So, how to handle this error? So, to handle this error, it must be within the try block. So, this statement, which is generating error, it must be within the try block. So, because already you said that this method is throwing exception. This method is throwing 
exception. So it must be within the try block. Try this statement must be in the try block. Catch exception. So I am writing a generalized exception e and print it. System dot. If you do not write system, then you can write e dot print stack trace print stack trace. This is also another way of printing. Let me follow this. Control S. Yes, compile successfully. Now earlier it was showing you are not catching. Now I kept what that two statement inside the try block. Now when you write in the try block, it is ready to handle that error. Now let us run. Yeah. Now here what I got the value of that three because here I kept what twelve by four. Twelve by four means three. So automatically the value of x is twelve, y is four. So twelve by four is three. So that three is written and printed on the screen. So there is no mistake. But instead of four. Let me write zero. If I write zero, what happens? X value is twelve, Y value is zero. So twelve by zero, twelve by zero means which is not possible. It is throwing exception. Whenever you are throwing exception, so it is handle catching and printing. So that error will come here now. Now let us check. Compile it. Yeah. Now divide by zero is not possible. It is printing. Now because it is not possible division by zero, so it is throwing exception. Whenever that exception comes, this catch block is catching. It is printing. Okay. So in this way you can write throws keyword. So here I am not catching. Here I am throwing. That I will give to my parent. Who is the parent? The main method is the parent because this fellow is calling. So the main method is taking care. So those statement you should write inside the try block. So whenever the method is not capable of handling exception, you throw it. So whenever writing method throwing, write throws. So this is the way you can write throws. So I hope it is clear. So today you have learned about how to use all the keywords: try, catch, throw, throws, finally. So, in the future days, you will be using all types of keywords to make program to be more robust. I hope it is clear. Then, one more concept is there: how to write our own exception. We'll go to a new one. User defined user. Define exception. So you how to write your own exception? Because arithmetic exception, array index bound exception, null pointer exception, or file not found exception, these are all built in. Those exceptions are written by somebody else. But today I want to write my own exception for my application. So if you want to write your own application, then you should write a separate one. Class assume. My exception I want to write my own exception. If you want to write your own exception, then you have to write a class with some name. Here you should derive from ex extends extends exception. So that means your class should be also derived from exception class. Because I told you for every exception, the parent is exception class. So you have to write extends exception. Then here you should write one exception. Control V. You write a constructor. Some message. Assume you want to write a message something. Define one string. String message. Okay. Here write message equal to hello error. 
some message you can write. Now, whenever this error comes, I will throw exception. Now, to print that message, I think I told you there is a method called two string method. That two string method you should write public string two string. Here, what I will do, I will return that message. Return that message. Whatever the message you want to print, that you can write here. That message I will print. Okay. Hello, my error. Here, my exception is my built in. It is not built in, it is user defined. So, here, what I will do, I will write my exception demo. My exception demo here I will write my main method public static void main ex here exception e sorry not exception string arguments array now here what is my goal to throw this exception which exception my exception my exception let me declare two variable int x comma y if x is greater than y i want to throw my exception i want to throw my exception so let me read x value x equal to integer dot pass int of args of 0 that means i am reading the 0th argument from the command prompt and i am reading 1th argument from the command prompt i am reading 2 integer from command prompt i am doing y here the x value and y value I am reading from command prompt. Now I will check if x is greater than y. If x is greater than y, then I want to throw exception. Throw th or whatever. Throw what? Through what? My exception. So you have to throw the object. So you have to throw object means throw new my exception. I am throwing the exception. Whenever you are throwing exception, you must handle it. So, it must be inside the try block. So, keep these things in the try block. Try. So, these things I kept inside the try block. Okay. If for all there is no mistake, okay. If there is a mistake, then the catch block will activate. Catch exception E. Which exception you are catching? You are catching my exception. So you can write my exception E. So my exception is not built in. This is written by you. This is the program written by you. So here I'll write system dot out dot println the E. So what is the name of the program? My exception demo. Control C, Control S will be my exception demo java source file okay now go to the command prompt java c my exception demo this is java yes it is saying that array required but string String arguments. Argument array, string argument array. So you should write it must be an array. Control S. Without array, you cannot use the index. Yes, syntactically correct now. Now Java. My exception demo. Yes. And I told you. 
your program reads two integer on command prompt. So that means I am reading yes, 12 and 4. 12 and 4. Yeah, it is showing that hello my error. Because here this 12 is x and 4 is y. That means 12 is greater than 4. That's why throwing exception. Because I kept considering if x is greater than y, throw the exception. Otherwise, do not throw. So, otherwise, I'll print a message else. Else, I'll print a message system dot out dot printer and x is not greater than y. Not greater than y. I want to print a message like this. Let me compile again. Yes, compile. Here, assume instead of 12, 4, I will do it. 4, 12. That means x is 4, y is 12. 4 is greater than 12? No. So, x is not greater than y. So, that means it is not thrown the exception. If you want to write your own exception, you have to follow this technique. What you have to do? This is the user defined exception. This program. This is the main one. My exception. Extends exception. This is the main part. That means you are taking the behavior of exception class. And this is the constructor part. And this is the two string part. This is the one which allows you to print. Which allows you to print. Whatever the message you written, that message is coming. So this is the way you should write your user defined exception. So please remember, if you want to write your user defined exception, the three things. First thing is, your class must be derived, must be extended from exception class, first point. Second, you should write a constructor. Third, you should overwrite two string method. These three points you should remember to write user defined exception. Okay. So, let me write the steps for user defined exception. What you would follow? Step 1. Extend from exception class This is the first step Second Write constructor Third Override two string method These are the three steps you have to follow to write user defined exception. If these three steps are followed, then automatically you can write your own exception. That exception you can use in the program. So now in this program, I use my exception. So in the future days, we will be creating our own exception and you can throw and you can control the program and your program become more reliable and more robust. Okay. So we have discussed about all varieties of exception concept. So, practice well and use this concept in your application so that program will be more reliable. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.